Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Tommy, and today I'm gonna to show you the latest improvements I've made to my homemade lathe. Whether it's your first time here, or even if you've been here before, welcome to One Minute Workbench. So a lot of you have recommended that I lower the tool rest on the lathe and add some steel to it to protect the wood from the gouges and the chisels that I'm using when I'm turning a piece. And so in this video, I'm just gonna show you how I went about doing that. I removed the tool rest from the lathe and then removed the screws that hold the two pieces together. The pieces are also held together by glue and pin nails, so I very carefully cut them apart using the table saw. I cut the piece just shy of the base to make sure I didn't go over. Because of that, I had to remove just a thin layer from the base afterwards. I used a chisel to get the large pieces and then finished it off on the disc sander. Then I made a mark for the cut that will reduce the height of the tool rest. Then I made an angled mark because a lot of you suggested that I put a slight angle on the tool rest. I didn't use a specific angle, but I think it's about 15 degrees. I just quickly cleaned up the edges of the cuts with a sanding sponge and then set out to reattach the two pieces. Just like before, I used glue and pens. Then I clamped them together. The angled scrap from the last cut was perfect for helping me get the clamps to take hold. While that was drying, I started marking out my piece of steel. This is a 1 8 inch by 1 inch piece of plain steel. It cost me just a few bucks at Home Depot. I cut it down to size using my angle grinder chop saw. I cleaned up the sharp edges of the cut with a flat file, and then cleaned up the rest of the edges, which were also still a bit sharp from the factory. I used a flat file and some 150 grit sandpaper. I made my marks by lightly scratching the surface with my calipers and then hammering a small dimple at the center of each of my marks. I started off by just increasing each of the dimples a little bit so that it would be better able to hold oil. For this first hole that I'm drilling, I'm actually using a bit that's almost exactly the same size as the outer diameter of the threads of the screws that I'm going to be using, which are number 8 screws. After I drilled the through holes, I used a countersink bit to make sure that the heads of the screws were going to be recessed below the surface of the metal piece. Before moving forward, I just tested a screw in each one of the holes to make sure I liked the way it looked. The fit was good, so I kept going. The countersink bit actually produced a bit of a sharp edge, so I removed that sharp edge first by filing it down and then using some 150 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. I then decided the overall surface could benefit from being smoothed out, and the quickest way to accomplish that was with the orbital sander. It was really starting to feel nice in my hands at this point. Once the glue for the two pieces of the tool rest had dried, I used a drill to extend the depth of the old pilot holes, and then added the screws back into the assembly. I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to keep the metal strip centered on the tool rest while I drilled pilot holes and added the screws. Then I came up with the idea to just clamp four pieces of wood all around it so it couldn't move in any direction. This worked out great. I was able to add the screws while the piece stayed perfectly centered. And the screw heads were perfectly recessed below the surface.
Another simple addition I made was adding this fender washer, which just helps distribute the pressure a little bit better. I added just a little bit of paste wax to the steel to help prevent it from rusting. The tool rest looked great when I put it back on the lathe and it felt like it was ready for a test. When testing on this first piece, I realized it was still slightly too high. So off camera, I reduced its height again so that it was just below the center of the workpiece. And now in this shot, you can see how it looks after lowering it again. The gouge is now angled just slightly upwards towards the workpiece. This feels a lot safer, and at the same time, it's much more comfortable to hold. The metal strip is awesome. It does a great job of reducing drag between the gouge and the tool rest, which makes for a very smooth sliding action. And at this point, the lathe is just a pleasure to use. Hey, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to everybody who gave feedback to help me make these improvements. I'd love to hear what you think about this project in the comment section below, and if you have any quick questions you want answered, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And until the next time I see you, I hope you have fun building something.